Oh Lord. Ooh, you are so big. So absolutely huge. That's what I she just said. wanted to tell you, we're all really impressed down here. Amen. And remember that we are mature audiences only, folks. Hey, it's Tuesday night. Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Uh, Between the Rolls, our version of a talk show. Uh, we're glad you have joined us. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube and uh, buy, don't buy some of our shit on uh, tinyurl slash RPG swag. Uh, we keep the prices low because we really don't care. Uh, but take a look at it. We've got some cool things on there. Uh, tonight's show, uh, we're going to do a brief recap on the Saturday show, which got uploaded to YouTube earlier. And then we're going to go ahead and discuss the almighty. Uh, no, not D not the DM, uh, deities. Uh, so I think we got a good show on it. Uh, these guys, if you haven't seen them, uh, welcome. You must be a first time visitor. Uh, if you have seen them, you can just post it note, you know, the left side of the screen and get rid of those two, but you can't kill your audio. <laughs> uh, starting over on the left side, we'll start, uh, high left. Uh, Blake, tell us who you are. Tell us, uh, about yourself. First and foremost, if this is your first time here, go back and watch The Murder of the Doge. There uh, you go. See, I'm not the only one that loves that one. Uh, but I'm Blake, uh, uh, corporate accountant from middle America. Uh, I like to say fuck a lot. And that is accurate. Uh, below him, we've got Kyle. Kyle's currently wearing a shirt. We'll see how long that lasts. Kyle, tell us Not long! <laughs> <laughs> you already have too much information about me. Might as well go to the next person now. Uh, I, didn't get the, I didn't quite catch the cup size. <laughs> I'll do it one more time for you. <laughs> Folks, if you ever wondered who, what Chunk turned into uh, after he grew up from the Goonies, now you know. Uh, across oh, whoa, whoa. the way from he's a lot better looking than I am. Yeah, let's be honest. Uh, Kyle, you aren't around schools, are you? Uh, often, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there for local law enforcement? There you go. There's probable cause. Wait, across what? the way from our resident flasher is Scott. Scott, tell us about yourself. Hi, um, I'm Scott. I'm a um, player in DM. I guess I've been playing since about the early 80s. Um, and um, I'm in real life. I'm, I'm an economist. So that means I enjoy watching slow moving train wrecks. <laughs> and you're watching one now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I should. I just should have. Now, now the I really should have left it alone. You know, I, I could have kept my shirt on, but no. <laughs> Last but not least is Joe. Joe is making his second appearance on Murder Hobo Inc. For some reason, he forgot how bad it was the first time and said, <laughs> "Sure, let's do it again." Joe, tell us about yourself. Uh, okay, uh, so I I quit the day job and I run Inkwell Ideas, who makes Worldographer and hexographer and Dundermorph dice and a bunch of card decks and stuff like that. Uh, I've been playing since the early 80s. Um, yeah, and you'll learn more about me through the rest of the show, I guess. Excellent. Can I have a spoon woman? Your microphone is on. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to lift up your shirt too? <laughs> Oh, oh, you know, I, I always wonder when I lose control of the show, and I'm thinking it's short in record time, time today. Uh, at least, at least okay. Blake started us with a prayer ish, so I guess that's good. Oh, and I have uh, a game to finish. Jeez. Yeah, I had to cut you off because it would have ended up in one of your limericks. Someone uh, finished on me? It's a baby fork. Oh, only on the stomach. Christ. Uh, first topic tonight, folks. Uh, remember, we are for mature audiences. Uh, I we're, gonna, that. 
we're going to go ahead and <laughs> recap episode 40, uh, Departing Whitewood. Uh, for frequent viewers, you know that Blake and Kyle are 50% of that show. Uh, Joe and Scott did not get the opportunity to watch it, so we're going to make a just a brief uh, overview of the uh, episode. Blake, way, way uh, to support your flat, your platform there, guys. Really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, gosh. I watch every episode, slaving away all the time. <laughs> and our numbers are there to show it. <laughs> if we checked IPs, it'd be Kyle's house. Uh, Blake, go ahead and uh, give the folks at home an overview of what you were doing, and then we'll have Kyle give an overview of what happened. Well, we, we started off, uh, essentially, we... We could do no more for that shitty little town that we knew was going to fail as soon as we left because it burned down and then fell into the swamp every time we were gone. That was the house. So, that was the house. Yeah, that was that whole fucking town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, so having, having washed our hands of it and absconded with what goods we could during our downtime, uh, Having read some of the books that uh, Kyle's character had uh, pro procured from the headmaster's office in one of the first couple episodes, uh, we learned that uh, we should indeed actually be heading to the other town, uh, I believe to the south, that the uh, Oracle had pretty much told us we needed to be going to anyways. And in, said, in very oh, specific fuck. detail. Yeah, yeah. It said fuck it, <laughs> fuck it with the Pegasi, because I think... I think Ernie's character decided that Manticore would be sufficient to be able to turn into. Uh, along the way, we got uh, uh, th th there were there were wolves, which ended up being wargs that we lobbed uh, some of the disembodied heads that I uh, or I guess they're disembodied heads that I had been procuring throughout my travels at them, and in, in order to appease them, since I could. I could tell by the hackles on their back and the rumbly in their tumbly that they were hungry. So we're doing Winnie the Pooh now? <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. Give me the right. Winnie the Pooh. Rumbly in the tumbly. I, I, I'm just a fan Winnie of the uh, assonance. Um, <laughs> That's a little bear. <laughs> so so uh, after, after dispatching with the ones that remain hostile, uh, we found the Warren. Uh, where we were each able to acquire our own little pups, and I started wearing mine like a baby Uh From there, we ended up uh, continuing on towards town. I uh, had to cross a bridge. Kyle decapitated his puppy. Uh, War cow got stuck in a tree. Oh, and I almost got Saffron, but Saffron wasn't wild about me. Saffron was also not a stripper either. Um... To be fair uh, for viewers at home who have not been watching the campaign, A, the Whitewood community was a side trick, never intended to be fleshed out. B, uh, they like to not be railroaded, so they decided to stay in fucking Whitewood uh, overdue. Uh, Kyle, you want to expound on Blake giving head and you tearing a puppy in half and getting a cow in a tree? No, that pretty much explains all of it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Folks, we do have it uploaded at YouTube. Uh, the start of that show was a little bit rough, uh, so we've cropped all that crap out, so it, it's a nice, cohesive little package. Or it's if you're just watch me it, lifting up my shirt and tearing puppies' heads off. And, all and the good stuff. <laughs> so, he was checking himself out quite a lot. Or if you want to watch Twitch, you can always just fast forward through the stupid parts, uh, i.e. Uh, either one of those two speaking for the most part. Uh, all in all, all four of our campaigners did survive. However, they are facing off with an unknown adversary, and that is where we did the cutscene. So we will be doing uh, another campaign episode in two weeks. This Saturday, Blake is going to be DMing. Uh, I may be playing. I may not be playing. It depends on what our cast looks like. I, I know you fuckers can't get enough of me. Sure, we'll go with that. Uh, you want to give a brief overview to those who may want to have a seat at the table, which is always open, folks. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to uh, uh, prematurely uh, uh, 
dump my load. So I, I'll, I'll just say it's a, we're going to go six level. It's going to be urban. It's going to be uh, very uh, light on the combat. Uh, any any actually uh, hostile encounters are probably going to be incidental. So I'm curious to see how uh, how we can do that. So it's going to be a lot more. Uh, uh, Not, I don't want to say skills, but role play heavy. Right. Uh, Kyle, Scott, and Joe, uh, what do you think? Uh, does uh, Blake have a snowball's chance in hell of running a very low uh, combat scenario? <laughs> I'm thinking no. <laughs> I wasn't I, paying I, attention. I, you're, you're, uh, <laughs> your, your faith is overwhelming, Frank. I appreciate it. You know, I don't know the, the players have a say in that. <laughs> A big say. Well, uh, last time Blake uh, DM'd for us, it was his first time in. Uh, and, and you football bunted a six year old. Two <laughs> I thought it was a halfling. I really thought it was a halfling. Not that it made any difference. But uh, last time Blake DM'd, he got the short end of the player's stick and got it crammed. Uh, we'll see how much better he does so uh for those of you who are looking for a game a single one shot uh go ahead and uh, hit us up at m hobo inc on twitter or m hobo inc at gmail or m hobo inc at damn near everywhere else uh so you know take a look at that we're always interested in new players and you know we would like to give blake a break from the buttholes but we we will nail them uh nice. Going to start with your characters being abducted in a van and waking up with hurt bodies. <laughs> We've done that show already. I was going to say, yeah, that was my first campaign with Frank. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that show. Uh, folks, let's move on to the main topic at hand and allow Joe and Scott to get two words in edgewise. Deities. Uh, whew, what are they good for? Absolutely nothing. Uh, gentlemen, let's first go ahead and discuss deities in a campaign versus a solo setting. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with Joe on this. Joe, uh, in order of importance, let's, let's talk importance first. Uh, tell me your viewpoint on when you're in a campaign, do you want to see a, a lot of deity interaction or at least visibility, or does it just not matter to you? And then the second side of the coin, uh, solo one shots. All right. Uh, so as far that's as that's about talking from Joe, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> move on. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I look at them as more background dressing in the early levels, um, and then as the campaign progresses, and if you're talking D and D centric type things. 10th level above or somewhere in there, maybe they're meeting a deity or, or some angels related to, 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 to the God and then uh, interacting above there. But, but, you know, occasionally maybe disguised or something at lower levels, but um, I don't really see um, a, a particular God taking a major interest in a bunch of first level characters um, for that. But then again, on the other hand, if there's players that have an interest in hey, I'm a cleric of this and I want these particular domains and I want your help to develop a, a god for this particular um, uh, concept, then I'm happy to work with them for that too. Well, that's a good answer. Scott, your thoughts, same question. Okay, so um, my thoughts on this are probably gonna more or less parallel that in that at the lower levels, your, your, your pantheons, your deities, aren't really going to be as as important because frankly you know they're not going to give a shit about a bunch of first you know first level character but in in any pantheon that you have deities or any you know group of deities and in, in pretty much any campaign setting that you have and then of course just also in you know in mythology in general deities you know serve several purposes and so i try to translate that to the campaign to where you're always going to have some type of um idea of how the world was created so you're going to have a, some type of creation story you're going to have deities are going to help help to define what the definition of good and evil neutrality law and chaos <laughs> then what, what um has to do with uh with plot hooks 
uh, within a campaign, you're going to have something along the ideas of how does the world end, you know, whether it be Ragnarok or Armageddon or the end of days or whatever. Those are the three things you do. <laughs> Those two guys are how it's going to end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Those two guys are how it ends. How, how everything falls off the rails and comes apart. But but I, I I agree with Joe that as you move, as the players move through their tiers of play, past 10th, 11th, 12th, and they start using spells, specifically uh, paladins and clerics that are call for more divine type of interaction, then that's to where they can be seen as, you know, instruments of divine will, for lack of a better word. And uh, the interaction between the players and whatever pantheon of deities, I think at that point becomes a little more important. Well, that, that's fair. Uh, how about we go with Kyle? There were two people. I forgot the question. <laughs> uh, how important are deities in campaign? Uh, how important are deities in one shots? Uh, as important, as, well, for campaigns, it's as important as the players make them to be. Um, I mean, first you have to put up a campaign that people are going to be interested in. And so, you know, maybe when you're describing your campaign, are you saying, yeah, the gods walk among us. And, you know, at first level, you're going to encounter a god or a goddess at some point. Don't piss them off. <laughs> or, you know... <laughs> Hey, in this campaign, uh, it's more mono, uh, monotheism. There's one God, but there's little angels who do all the little domain things. They help out God in general, uh, and they like to fight and bicker among each other. Or, you know, the gods are aloof. Um, or, say, Eberron, you know, there is divine magic, but, you know, there's no proof of any of the gods. Um, so, as far as campaign goes, you know, that's probably going to be part of your pitch and if it's not and none of the uh, other the players bring it up yeah they're probably not going to be very big unless it's maybe part of your arc um as far as solo goes bring um, me solo <laughs> and the wookie <laughs> Wow, oh. Kyle's speechless. Holy shit. <sighs> Mark that joke down. We're going to redo that one. <laughs> All right. You stole that from me. I was going to be Jabba the Hutt for the fourth. But anyway, uh, uh, um, <laughs> one shots, not solos, one shots, I assume. Um, they're going to be as important as uh, you make them out as far as the one shot is. Um, if they are going to be important, I definitely would say a week ahead of time, drop that in there. Be like, hey, you know, um, the cult of Asmodeus is going to rob the temple of something, something, and we're going to have you try and stop temple it. Of Steve. <laughs> no, Steve's the head curator. Uh, God, can't trust you with anything. Uh, <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Blake, your call. Uh, I would say that uh, one of the things that the gods would have learned uh, during their impressive uh, tenure as a god would be that not all attention is necessarily wanted. So just because they're not pouring their attentions onto this first level adventurer doesn't mean that he's not there just trying to ground nose the hell out of it. Uh, it might be that there was a relic in the town he grew up in or, uh, you know, was raised in a monastery or, or however. I, I think that uh, <clears throat> at a first level, uh, you would almost expect to be kowtowing to some sort of deity uh, if, if you've had that kind of an experience in your life, even though they could be totally unaware of your existence. Uh, but over time, being able to make that connection and uh, actually start to be recognized as a force that they can use to exert their will uh, would kind of be how I would evolve that. And the other way I would phrase that would be, if you're going to be throwing demons at anyone, who are they, uh, who are they serving? Uh, how, how is, uh, 
if you have gods, you have gods of hell or the lords of hell or the underdark or whatever, or the underworld or the nine I, hells. I don't think it's the lords of hell because I think it's trademarked by a motorcycle group. Uh, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I'm thinking of the, uh, the, the, they use the H E L version of hell. That way there's no copyright. Don't worry. <laughs> Just make sure you spell it out when you say it again. They do tend to be more Norse. So, yeah. But, uh, but no, I, I think if you're going to be throwing demons at your characters that you should at least be, uh, uh, make, make them aware of some kind of, uh, celestial conflict going on. What? Why are these demons in, invading the world? And if there if there are any deities that aren't evil, do they give a shit? Uh, I, I think that that's a very important part of your world building when you're choosing what enemies you're going to be using. That's fair. All four of you have brought up very good points, and it seems like all four of you were on board with the relevance of them or slash visibility. Let me go ahead and uh, throw in a secondary question on that. If your campaign has PCs that are clerical, druid, or paladin nature, uh, do you think, yay or nay, uh, it's a good idea to kind of start early and start putting it in the PC's head, hey, you've got a deity to answer to, toe the line. This time we'll start with Scott. No, that's a good question. And um, they don't pay me for my looks, Scott. I come up with good answers. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that, that's what I always thought. It, it's, it's hard to say because what I found out is that are, are quite content to take on classes that have divine spellcasting not because of the backstory of where they're getting those powers from, but in order to try to, you know, min max their character or have a character build that, uh, that takes advantages of, of, of that spell casting class, whether it be a cleric or and thus have access to the entire spell or there, I, I don't want to say it's gaming the system, but, but it's, most certainly they're structuring their character in a way to achieve maximum benefit for the character. And then there are others that, you know, I, I have one player that um, he had a eighth level. We started the campaign off at like eighth level. And as part of the backstory, he sent me, you know, like nine pages of backstory in, in how he came up through the priesthood and all of his, you know, different things, starting from an acolyte to an adept to this, to this, to this was very, you know, interested in doing this. So, I'm going to say that if you have those classes involved, basically it really will be up to the player if they just want to play this off and try to, you know, achieve benefit because that's how the class was was constructed. Then you have to kind of balance that because if not, then you'll lose that player. They will drop out of the campaign, and then um, and then then I suppose it's um, if they're they're a shit player, then that's fine. They just let them drop. But if not, then you may find a way to to maybe modify how, how things work to either try to get them more interested or just let them play the character the way that they want to play. Fair. Kyle? You had one person answer the question before me and I wasn't <laughs> listening to the question. What was it again? <laughs> when uh, you start a campaign and you have druids, clerics, or paladins in it, uh, how much pressure should you put on them to be more attuned to their deity? I'm just going to start writing the questions down for that you. That would really Actually, help, next except time I can't first, read. So. So. Yeah, there you go. Put, it, put them in chat. Put them in chat. Uh, there okay. you go. Um, uh, again, that's going to be world and uh, player dependent. Hold on. Let me do my Johnny Depp here thing while I'm doing this. Uh, because, I mean... Hitting Amber Heard? Oh, too soon. <laughs> I don't I need to one day person. get up to that level, but right now I just have to stick with my wife. All uh, anyway. lawsuits can go to Kyle Huff, H U F F. Huh? Uh, don't worry. Um, <laughs> do, 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 you, do you have a stick the size of your thumb to show her later? Ah, it's a little Boudoc bit smaller, Saints actually. Reference there, boys and girls. <laughs> Rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Uh, so, campaign specific. 
Blake. Uh, oh, oh, well, fine. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, during the yeah. song, um, because while we're on the whole uh, Pantheon thing, uh, players are really going to be pushing this because um, <clears throat> some players are atheists and they really want to stick by that. And if you introduce and say there are gods in your world and they just might shit on that and they might hate clerics or something like that you hear stories about it i've seen it once uh it does not end pretty so a lot of pantheon things i find tend to be um very player centric and what they're comfortable with um as well as campaign dependent so that's a good answer blake sorry to go off blake no you're fine uh wait uh Actually, following up with that, I, I think that it's important to recognize that just like any other monster, that I, I, I would say that pretty much any of the deities can be slain, uh, and that that could be a, a hook for people that, that are into that kind of thing. It's like, okay, if you really want to go prove that there is no god, kill all the gods. <laughs> but, uh, but as far as the rest of that goes... Uh, all the Christian uh, viewers just shut off. <laughs> yeah, because we have so many here. of those. <laughs> uh, but but no, I'm I'm thinking back to uh, back to prudence because I I I I actually wrote three. This was when I first created her for that first campaign that I was in for two sessions. I created about six pages with her, and she was the head librarian at of of the Academy of Ogma after having worked for 120 years or something like that. And she now was now had been spoken to and, just, and and felt compelled that she needed to go out and be his vessel, and you know it, she uh, she continues to uh, act in that manner when she's out, regardless of what she's doing. She had to she had to rebuild the Mage Academy as as a well. No, no, she did not. No. No, that was a pain in my ass. Well, she you could have just said it didn't work, but she still she still felt she needed to stop and take a minute to. You didn't have to make me roll. If it was that big of a pain, just no, nope, not going to work, but uh, I'm going to try for I'm going to try for one one quick thing and then if it doesn't work, but she whenever she's out and she has the opportunity to act as his vessel, she she does. And uh uh it's uh something that if if for some reason she doesn't have a spell on yeah. it. <laughs> if for some reason she doesn't and have now it, you're mine. You know, if for some reason she doesn't feel like she has his favor, she ha she tries to regain it. You know, when I started missing with a bunch of spells, I had I'm like, okay, no, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna stop and you know, you know, uh, say a little prayer to Ogma. I say a little prayer to Ogma. Uh, so I, it, it's something that in in the back. We're of her all mind, old, and that one's still tanked. <laughs> it's something that in the back of her mind, uh, she's actually afraid of losing. If she if if she doesn't feel like she's being devout enough, that there would be consequences. Uh, and I think that that's actually a very realistic thing for the divine casters. I think that uh, actually having their deity no longer. Be use them, i.e., allowing them to cast some of the higher spells that they that they do uh, for uh, acting against their beliefs or against their dogma. I, it, it is a very uh, real and constant threat, even if it's not. I think that I play that way. Dogma starring Ben Affleck and and the shit demon. <laughs> that was an awesome scene. Golgath and shit, dude. Yes, exactly. That was my favorite. Well, part. No, he was also awesome, or awesome when uh, Alan Rickman didn't have any junk. Alan Rickman, rest oh. in peace. We loved him. Uh, Joe, wrap this topic up. Uh, what do you think when clerics, druids, and paladins are all part of that campaign? Hold them to a higher standard or let them run loose? I, I like the answers so far, as far as uh, um, let, the, let the players um, kind of determine that to a degree, work with them. And you know, if if a, if a particular player doesn't want to develop their 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 deity or their relationship with, with with that god, you know, work with the work with the player. They might just not have enough time, or they might just not be in, 
enthusiastic about creating it, but they'll 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 play it, you know, if you if you work something up and work it with them. So, um, and that was a good point. I hadn't thought about uh, um, particular players that might be non-religious and and really not like the concept of, of, uh, of gods in the campaign. Although, I mean, we're ex with a fantasy world, we're accepting so many other things that it's um, surprising to accept that. <laughs> It was surprising encountering this person. <laughs> Let me tell you that. <laughs> well, but you know, it. Uh, Blake brought up a good point about uh, you know if they stat it, you can kill it. Uh, and that was that was something that came up with the uh, I think the original deities and demigods. People were kind of against that. We're like, as soon as you give it stats, players are going to want to kill it. So don't give right. it stats. Was, was one of the things right? yeah that and that that was the exact thing i was thinking of because once oh, that book sorry. came out it's like 200 hit points <laughs> that dude is dead <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna rule an outer plane Woo! um yeah that's uh, <laughs> and, and you know what it, uh, I, and, I, and i would like to second that as well that I, I i don't think it should be intensely enforced but if you want to make their consequences for character actions that are way off to left field i don't think that that would be unreasonable well oh, no. and, and i think you could always do uh q1 queen of the demon web pits uh with loth as your right. adversary if you kill her on the prime plane that doesn't kill her you have to go out to her right. web space i think it's owned by wix or GoDaddy. i'm not sure which but you go out there and then you can kill them uh for sure <laughs> but uh yeah, that was one of the things where, you know, growing up and playing D&D &D like morons, uh, you know, it's like, well, hey, got the new deities and demigods book. Let's start killing King Arthur. <laughs> right. No. right. Uh, so, yeah, that, that was kind of interesting. Now, next topic we'll go to is using them as plot hooks. Uh, Kyle, pay attention. Uh, so in a campaign, if your players are up for it and remember young DMS, new DMS, uh, people thinking about being a DM, the players are just as important as you are because it takes everybody to make this story work. Uh, what do you think about using the deities as a plot hook, uh, to just make the campaign all about proving the new gods slain the old gods whatever kyle what do you think that's an idea there was a firework there was no lights but it made a sound that was nice if there was no light did the firework really go off sorry blake i'm just getting ready for my character on saturday there was a boom click click <laughs> Here comes the boom. <laughs> Ready or not. So, okay. so what do you think, Kyle? Would uh, that be a useful plot hook, or do you think that's more of a subplot hook? Because I always like to think of, well, what's the big picture look like, or shall I just put them in groups of threes? This is your goal. This is your goal. This is your goal. Or just, boom, this is your singular goal, and it's going to span the entire campaign. I mean, something can certainly span the entire campaign. Um, a god giving a cleric power at level one is, you know, them being involved at the very beginning. Um, but certainly, if you're going off killing gods, you might want to wait until the later levels for that. Nah. Yeah, just start <laughs> off level one, going after Tiamat. I've got it. <laughs> You've seen it in the cartoons. If Eric the Cavalier could do it, so can you. Yeah. <laughs> Blake, what do you think? Uh, I, I think uh, as far as using them as plot hooks goes, it depends on how uh, uh, how uh, much backstory and how involved they've been in your world up until that point. It, or, or if it's just a one shot, then that's fine. You know, world's in turmoil, the gods are fighting. But if you go all through your campaign at fighting, <laughs> This, this, this wizard and that lich and then all of a sudden oh now there's ragnarok and everyone's like well where the fuck did that come from that's the ice cream store right that's what yeah. happens when you turn left instead of following the dd and going right ragnarok ragnarok <laughs> but, it's right next to fraggle rock for you younger viewers <laughs> 
person versus. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think that a, they're perfectly fine plot hooks as long as uh, there's enough hinting and leading up to it that it's going to actually mean something. Otherwise, it, it, it doesn't have to be a god. It could just be literally any other big bad. Well, I'm sure the gods are going to strike you dead for that one, Mr. Smartass. Joe, your turn. What do you think? Plot hook? Uh, deities as a plot hook. If, yeah, if I'm no, still alive I'm... in the next three minutes, they didn't. <laughs> I, I'm I'm fine with it, you know. I mean, if, if that's what you want to, if that makes for a good story, if you know you kind of pitch the campaign a little bit to the players and and they're behind it, then by all means, um, I don't see a problem. Scott, <gasps> American Gods. That's your campaign idea. Essentially, the new gods killing off the old gods. Only you make it sad and desperate because they're all going to die anyway. Because of can America. I be Dana Scully? Godless country. <laughs> <laughs> and put all B-lister actors in it, right? Past their prime. That's the way to Ian do it. McShane. I love Ian McShane. Like Leave that man yeah. alone. He's a treasure. From you're the one insulting Ian McShane. Awesome. <laughs> Go ahead, Scott. So, so I I may take a slightly different take, although not not really in disagreement. Is that I don't like as an overarching plot hook. Uh, like the entire campaign being based upon some type of divine plot hook. I, I still think that, you know, people and creatures doing bad things uh, and seeking favor of the gods, in essence, uh, is, is a bit better. But I love the idea of holy quests in the middle of that. So uh, I'll, I'll give you one quick example. We had one of my players in a campaign, that, and I have, I have it set in Greyhawk, and they wanted to cast a um, a uh, spell for like call divine warrior or something like that. It was a, it was a spell I forgot where it came from, but it required a relic. So he had to research, and part of I think maybe the better part of an entire year was trying to find a relic that he can stick in this you know something so that in order he could call a divine warrior to his aid whenever he wanted to. That took the campaign off on an entirely different direction than I than I had to. And I ended up having to, you know, do the entire city of Greyhawk and you know all the levels of the towers and everything else. So it, it was a lot of fun, and it was all in order to get one one thing that, in essence, became somewhat of a holy quest. But I like the idea of bad actors that are seeking to, or to try to curry favor from their gods, and then unwittingly they could um um you know they can set into they can set into motion activities that would then be out of their control i i like i like that i'm laughing at zoom chat one of these days folks we're going to put zoom chat up there and you'll never watch us again uh, <laughs> just to be devil's advocate or contraria uh spoiler alert on saturday uh how about this? I am not a comic book guy. Uh, I don't watch the movies. I, I have no desire to watch the movies. They just are not my thing. Uh, if you Poor are, maybe you can... That's pretty bad. Well, yeah. Now, my daughter, she can tell you all that crap. Uh, but this last one, uh, The End Game, would that not be considered an arcing quest to knock off a deity? Um, I think I'm back to Joe now. I don't know. You, you, all of these characters have power. It's, it's almost, I mean, if you want to equate the superheroes with God, because they all have superpowers of varying degrees, I guess you could say, you know, Thanos and a few others might have more than others. And, you know, you've got certain characters that are literal gods, Thor and Loki or whatever and so forth. But um, I don't know. I think that I think it's apples and oranges, maybe. Would it be safe to assume that the superheroes all start out at, uh, say, ninth level, and that's where you're joining the story? Well, they're thereby know. going with Scott's thing of you don't want it to be the entire campaign arc, just a segment. Yeah, I guess I, that, I does, that does sort of fit with that. Yeah, okay. Scott. Well, yeah, I mean, I, 
I think so. Yes. And it's funny that even in, even in the, you know, the, um, the, uh, movies that you're, that you're referring to each one of those characters had in essence, their own hero's quest that they had to complete in order to quote unquote, maybe level up. Thor's a great example. You know, he had to come into his own power for, he started being able to shoot lightning bolts out of his hand instead of getting it from all from, from his hammer. Um, and at the same time, um, there's endless discussions on endless chat room about which one is the most powerful one, which one is this, which one is that. And you can go on and on and on. But I think the commonality is that they all have, you know, some type of, um, that they, they all have some type of story that they have to follow in order to achieve some next level of enlightenment power understanding something and then yes that the the um stopping thanos you can say was the overall arc and i think he would be considered a celestial so that that probably fits that probably fits okay kyle um definitely overarching that's campaign. bullshit that you remembered what the question is that time <laughs> i'm sorry you were talking about nerd things and uh, i love nerd things so i'm great at answering those questions uh, i'm sorry this is a talk show about rpgs it's all nerd things whoa thank whoa. you joe somebody's Calm paying down. attention <laughs> yeah. rpgs are geek things uh we're talking nerd things now um no, it's an overarching campaign, but it's in the background. Uh, Thanos is off. Yeah, he wants the stones and everything like that, but he doesn't exactly know where they are until they start to become active in the world. So, uh, what, Captain America, the Tesseract becomes available, people start messing with it, and all of a sudden it's bloop. Poop on the radar drawing in the big bad guy from way over here by the way for those who are just looking at this beautiful thing right here my hand is way over here and it's coming in slowly and so and the whole arc of that is just these stones are slowly becoming more prevalent people are rediscovering them trying to harness the power and meanwhile you know the big bad guy is just slowly coming in and by the time that the heroes are ready to face the big bad guy, there he comes in, taking them out one by one until he gets everything he wants. Everyone loses, of course, unless, oh, that's spoilers. Oh. This whole show is about spoilers. Yeah, okay, great. Oh, I should watch this show more often then. Sounds pretty nerdy. <laughs> Blake, wrap this up. <laughs> He's going to nerd uh, off in, on us. In, in, in the Marvel Extended Universe, there aren't nearly enough rape, raped maidens for your point to actually be valid. Noted. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, let's move on to Pantheons. Uh, the, in, in the campaigns that you envision, uh, a lot of pantheon gods or just like a central amount uh start with scott i normally mix normally three different pantheons so i'll i'll mix um well maybe sometimes four i'll normally since a lot of my campaigns are in greyhawk i'll have the whole greyhawk pantheon uh but then i'll have the ability to do to the idea of an existence of a multiverse you can contact different entire pantheons of gods that are kind of happy to uh, maybe establish their dominance or establish their presence in an entirely different area. So that is something that I play with is multiple pantheons. Kyle? I was actually paying attention to this question, and I You're will be still happy to nerd to out <laughs> the question. Um, so obviously it's a very good question question and i am going to be happy to address this here very soon uh once i collect my thoughts on this great question what was the question again uh -huh. the question was uh pantheons a lot of gods or a few gods um let me first say off my favorite type of pantheon uh and because i've been reading forgotten realms is you know the forgotten realm pantheon in which that, yes, the gods die out, they fade from existence, 
uh, they become new ones. So I'm very much happy with a fluctuating pantheon. Um, if you build a campaign world and you set it over a series of long times, I like the idea that, you know, early on in your campaign world, you know, if your heroes ever reach 20th level, they may become so storied that eventually, you know, 500 years from now, uh, the cleric of Bob may exist because of Bob the fighter from that. So I like <laughs> a fluctuating pantheon, although um, um, everyone usually goes with a, 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 the big pantheon. So I wouldn't mind being, playing in a campaign where it was, um, like I was uh, saying earlier, a mono theism a, a kind of catholic version you have saint jude of wine but above him is the god um which that seems like it would be kind of an interesting campaign it'd have to be more interesting but fluctuating pantheons that's what i really enjoy because there's story there gotcha blake uh <clears throat> i don't see anything necessarily wrong with uh combining your pantheons uh but i you know like if you want to take a couple of gods that are would be of the same domain and uh if essentially making them share if if, if they would be inclined to for some of the more positive uh positive pan, uh, domains and being just in they're getting along is just a friendly friendly rivalry for some of the more combative ones um but I also don't see anything wrong with if you want to make it essentially monotheistic, but again, even Christianity is a monotheistic religion, you still have people worshiping Satan, or rather the fabric satin. I still think that was something lost in translation. But, uh, <laughs> old, old Greek versus new Greek, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sure it had something to do with Hebrew. Um, but... I, I, I see nothing Blaming wrong with that. Jews is not allowed on the show, Blake. That's why I had to shave. <laughs> but but uh, but no, as, lo as long as you don't allow that to mean that there can't be uh, an adversary there. there I, I think that yeah. that's an important part of, of, you know, you can't just have the God of absolutely every fucking thing. Because sooner or later there's going to be a god, at least, or, or a demigod trying to weasel his way in. So I, I think that you can probably mix and match it how you want to, but you just have to make sure that you are able to weave enough story around it and you don't fence yourself in too much. God of fucking Very everything important. fits on a business card really well, though. <laughs> well, and, 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 and that was Zeus. So. Sometimes you just put DM and that, that makes it really... Thank you. Is that so hard? Yeah. Uh, Joe, finish us up on this topic. What do you uh, think? Sure. Um, what I like to do actually is uh, something with pantheons is I, I think more of it coming from cultures. And I, I look at the real world and we've got kind of, I mean, maybe we've got a Norse culture and so you've got Norse gods up there and you've got an Egyptian culture. And so in, 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 um, you know, even in a fantasy world where, where I might be starting from scratch, you know, I'm only going to go into depth on the ones that are important to the campaign, but I might have some ideas of, okay, over here, they're, they're, it's like this. Over here, we have this set of pantheon. But then even more, I'll bring into it, and there might be a culture in that same world that is monotheistic over here. There might be another one that is more spiritual over here. You might have something more Native American worshiping animal spirits or something over here. Um, so I look at it and, and then I developed the one that's important to the campaign. That's good. I was always a big... And, and, and if I can actually follow up on that too, you keep throwing druid, druids into this conversation and I don't... I, the, the way they're written, yeah, I guess they kind of are a spiritual caster, but uh, I, I, I think of them more as, again, the word that he used that brought that to my mind was spiritual or... Uh, holistic. Holistic rather than actually <laughs> divine. Uh, like Swiss has, cheese. Holy. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think... Gwyneth Paltrow, the, the priest of Mistra. <laughs> oh, so goofy. 
you but, have to worship but, the magical box that contains her head. <laughs> I, I just thought you were going to say the magical box. <laughs> as soon but, as I uh, uttered it, I knew I was screwed. <laughs> but, but so did the box. But, but that's a good way screwed. to <laughs> to enforce <laughs> a, a devout, stringent adherence as long as you have uh, you know, a couple basic tenets that, you know, the the uh, the, the spirits of your ancestors have guided you towards uh, following. To add on top of that, as talking about being <laughs> connected to uh, uh, gods themselves, um, clerics being connected to gods, you just have them be connected to an idea. Uh, a light domain cleric just doesn't believe in a god but they believe that the light will burn everything away and everything will be good and um that's really one of the things why i say the players need to really uh talk about how they want to be how they want the gods to be involved or how they want their thing you know paladins these days they don't have to follow a god they just have to follow their oath and they get their divine power maybe that's just you know I follow these things, I get to uh, smite you. Um, and maybe if I believe in this idea so much, I can summon fireballs to burn you all. I think it's their repressed <laughs> sexual rage that allows them to cast fire out of their fingertips. Uh, I was always a big fan growing up of uh, is, Weiss. Is that what fire is, venereal disease. Exactly. Uh, uh, type uh, B. Nice. Weiss Hickman and their Dragonlance saga. Three gods, uh, and man, uh, the twin trilogy with the neutral god. Oh my god. That is, that to me was classic writing. Uh, good, evil, and neutral. And the neutral was just phenomenal. I think they did a really nice job. Uh, on a secondary note, if you go to a convention where uh, Margaret and I assume Tracy are, I've ha I have not had the pleasure of meeting him, but Margaret is extremely approachable. Uh, definitely take a few minutes to say hi to her. Uh, you will not be disappointed. She likes Reese's well, peanut butter cups, so if you bring her a bag of those, she will thank you. Yeah. She will be at Gen Con. <laughs> and yet. the other thing. Uh, go ahead, Joe. With, with, so I, I've seen Tracy at a convention, and he does the killer breakfast, and that's quite a bit of Nice. Yeah, I, I have not. I don't know if he goes to Gen Con. I have not found him there. Uh, I've gotten to meet Margaret a he couple has, times. But it might be it might be something where it's you know depending on. How well, if he goes this year, uh, we'll we'll find him a seat for Oasis in the Rift. We're full up because we sold out in under a day. But we'll always uh, find a seat. Uh, and on that note, if you're going to Gen Con, uh, swing on by. We'll be in the Marriott. Second floor, Friday, one, two, five. Uh, myself, our producer, Carrie, and uh, Ashley, who uh, has made a few appearances on here. She'll also be DMing. Swing on by and see us. Uh, you can buy Rotten Tomatoes uh, at the back of the trash can. I will be selling them for 50 cents a pop. Just overturn the table and spill everybody's shit. That's the important thing. Yeah. Uh, wow, this topic is expansive. Let's go with... Uh, uh temples uh, we'll go with temples uh how big a part should they play in a campaign uh either looting or visiting or the source of information uh we started i think with kyle last time so that means blake blake what do you think about temples uh, uh, write that shit down. i think they are great uh resources to throw into your campaign, especially at, at lower levels when you don't necessarily have a lot of the uh, higher level healing available to your party through your PCs. Uh, you know, okay, well, shit, one of them accidentally got turned to stone somehow, and we don't have anyone who can fix that. The only way we're going to be able to fix that is we got to go find a temple. Uh, and it helps them of their loot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. If, if, you're, if you're that way inclined, if you're a cleric or a paladin of a ri rival order and you want to just go and desecrate the hell out of that shit, uh, I think that, that can also be a, a good plot hook and a good uh, cash to go find some magical items and relic level uh, 
items just in general. Uh, I don't think that, I think that it can also be a good source for uh, any of those uh, characters to uh, help create their backstory even further. It's okay, I left this cloister. You know, I, I came from this specific Franciscan order of Gothel. It, it, so uh, if you go there, hey, you're probably going to get a discount if you need to find somewhere to stay for the night. Or, you know, if you need to get that heavenly hand job to, cure, to cure you the clap, you know, okay, I can probably give it to you for 50 gold off. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think Josh so, Tamlin's running the temple again. So I, I, I don't think that they should be underestimated as resources uh, just in general, especially, especially at the low levels. Fair enough. Joe, what do you think? Um, temples and their importance in the campaign? Yes. That's yep. A question. Kyle uh, yeah, I think He knew. <laughs> he was, was paying that? attention. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. I know. I, I, I'll echo what. He was too distracted by the heavenly hand job. <laughs> 50 gold off. I got that part. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, having having uh, uh, recently made an icon pack for our worldographer with all the different temples for all the, for 15 different faces, temples are very important to your campaign. You need to put them on your maps, absolutely. Very nice. Nice pitch, too. That's <laughs> Hey, you got to pitch your stuff, man. Uh, I love it. It's great. Scott, what do you think? Yeah, I, I like the idea of temples mainly within the context of politics. So um, whenever I'm looking at plot hooks for urban campaigns, normally I'm having one temple wanting to maybe not necessarily desecrate, but wanting to, uh, you know, a, a temple of a rival god just came up and is stealing followers and tithes and such as that. So, hey, why don't you go and you know, go, go, go fuck them up a little bit, or you'll see the uh, local constabulary that wants to use the temple in order to manipulate the public for opinion to rise to power. So I, I like the function that's not only as to what, uh, as to what, uh, um, uh, you know, Blake said earlier that, that they're great sources for healing and, and the lower levels, but at the higher levels, I like the majority of the political intrigue that whenever I'm playing that side of things to come from the come from the various temples in the cities. Oh, the, yeah. There's there's no better motivation than my God told me to do it. Exactly. <laughs> no better. That's that's precisely correct. They're acting. Um, you know. You know what? What's the, the uh, you know Blues Brothers said it best? We're on a mission for God. Nice. Kyle, we're discussing temple prevalence and their use in a campaign. <laughs> <laughs> you preempted his question. <laughs> You're muted, jackass. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. I was tired. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> uh, no, temples. Uh, great. Uh, my favorite thing to do with them is to um, uh, subvert the whole Greek pillars temple thing mm -hmm. and to change it into something else. Uh, I'm going to introduce a, a location where my character calls home that is the holy market of Joaquin, um, a goddess of economy. And so instead of being a classic temple, it is a market for people to, you know, pay a little offering to the god and so the nice people pay big bucks for those strawberries i'll clue you in on that one later frank anyway um but uh, uh strawberries mean rosebuds and by rosebuds from that <laughs> yeah 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 we got that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh um uh uh, uh god of partying is going to be in a tavern um you know you're going to be able to get really good ale there um stuff like that and then as far as monsters and adventuring go um gods tend to play a pretty significant thing and prehistoric i believe anyway and so you know you have the bullywogs <laughs> frog god temple and you're going to stop a horrendous ritual because 
the Bullywogs are idiots. It's not a temple to their frog god. It's to an Aboleth who's going to break free and devour you. Love the Aboleths, man. Like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you I, can't steal it. That is copyrighted Kyle material. <laughs> and the other <unoriginal laughs> that'll be fifty gold or well, and, and that's to Kyle Hoff, right? That's right. H U F. Kyle Ho. <laughs> He's Filipino. Ho. Uh, one of the things I liked about Scott's comment was uh, the relic aspect of it, and if uh, you've got a new. Uh, religious sect coming into town stealing your followers i'm thinking a nice plot hook is the original temple says hey we need a fucking miracle here go out and get the staff of steve and yes copyrighted by murder hobo wing uh get the staff of steve and that way you know we can show them that ours is the one right. god so i uh, i always looked at the temples as a nice place for a healing and b guidance in the hey uh i need this shit go get it for me and i'll reward you oh, uh, oh you mean like when the oracle tells you where to fucking go yeah and then the players <laughs> ignore it for like four goddamn sessions i or didn't deity, ignore it i forgot <sighs> you were gone uh it's what just, are we talking you, about you want this at the oracle yeah he was with us he was with you guys at the oracle and then he went on his three-week hiatus or two weeks was it two weeks or three that you were Speaking out of which how's that anal fissure healing up <laughs> oh you know about that do you he is the fisher of, of men uh guys it, it's been over an hour already and we only scratched the surface of this topic which <gasps> doesn't come as a shock to me but uh it's always nice to see a lively conversation on it uh Let's go with final thoughts. Uh, Joe, final thoughts. Um, yeah, so this is something I had thought about a while back and uh, out on the Inkwell Ideas website, I've got a number of uh, religion and, and developing your own pantheon or developing your own religion kind of. <laughs> um, so, um, pitch it that. more, pitch the dice, man. I love the dice. <laughs> Uh, the dice are under print. Well, the, the designs are under production. And what's kind of cool there, sidetrack, sorry, you're taking me on a sidetrack here, but um, what's kind of cool there is we're doing this um, uh, book of descriptions for each of the designs that kind of tell you what, room, what the rims are all about. And that kind of forces me to think of things in a more logical way of what are these rooms here and, and how do they relate to each other. And so that's come along really well. Yeah. Don't steal any of Kyle Huff H O F material because no, no, he'll, he'll have not. civil litigation on your ass. Uh, Scott, final <laughs> thoughts. Uh, this is uh, this is obviously a topic that you know you could you could you know expand quite a bit on. Um, you know, there's uh, the idea about you know holy orders and the idea of you know cults and all been and all sorts of stuff. So it's a great broad your topic and uh and maybe we'll get a chance to expand on that one day but uh but always good to hear what other people are thinking about it and uh and uh, uh always always good to participate again always enjoy sometimes i enjoy myself more than others kyle <laughs> kyle is that the child that you keep in the pit uh yes crotch goblins crotch goblins you gotta get rid of them <laughs> Final thoughts, Kyle. <laughs> On what? Yes. <laughs> uh, it's a great word. Uh, always put and behind it, and your RPG experience <clears throat> will go places. You know, uh, I, I asked Kyle to see if he would be interested in doing the hosting of this show. and his. I would probably be good if I just had this list of questions and I could just answer it. I, I freaking said off. it to you, for God's sake. And, you know, <laughs> one of the key things about hosting the show is forget who the hell was in the preview show, Blake. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, maybe one of these days we'll get uh, Kyle, Joe, or Scott to go ahead and take over some things. I, I know that uh, having five people on the panel really slows it down. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we well, all... and, we, and we know you like a little bit of a break now, too. Amen. That's uh, true. Blake, uh, final thoughts, including Pitch and Saturday. 
or catch it Saturday. Our God Saturday. is an awesome God. He rains fire and brimstone. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I again, I like they said. I, I, I it, it's definitely a topic that there's still plenty to explore. I, I was stupid enough to touch on it last week, uh, but uh, no, I, I think that uh, uh, at least in, in creating a backstory coming up with something and then how you choose to uh, utilize them from there is up to your players and, and yeah I'll, I'll i'll pitch next week i'm running next week like i said earlier at the top if you're here at the top go week. rewind it watch that part yeah you're doing saturday that's this week dude uh because we will put this out week. yeah next week this upcoming weekend whatever i forgot i forget shit between goblins Kyle, available to talk in your campaign are in your one crotch shot? Goblins. Fucking crotch goblins. There's a bounty for crotch goblins. Oh. <laughs> the Duke clan might not show up. Uh, uh, folks, uh, A, we're glad that uh, you took the time to watch us, listen to us, and uh, watch us be dipshits about it, except for Joe and Scott, who were very nice. Kyle and uh, Blake. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they are what they are. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube channel. Uh, look at our new shop. Uh, we're trying to keep the prices low. If you see something that you like, hell, you can get a shower curtain with our shit on it. <gasps> a shower curtain. For shower sake. curtain. Hashtag war cow. <laughs> you can get the war cow image on your shower curtain, on your bath mat, on your iPhone case. Seriously, that site has it all. Uh, and we try to keep it. Uh, other than I don't that, have a shower. Other than that, I'll take us out on a hymn. Hymn. Oh, yeah. hymn. <laughs> uh, if you want a seat at the table, let us know. We will try and get you squeezed in. Uh, thanks to Joe for being foolish enough to go back and sit And these other three screen guys, you guys have been on way too long. <laughs> uh, folks, uh, from everybody here at Murder Hobo Holy Grenade. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> get, get us some damn music and let us. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to keep it. I, I, I tried to warn you. I told you. I told you. <laughs>